Growing up with ADHD was enjoyable, confusing, but at the same time, I think it's almost fueled a lot of what, what, I, what I do and how I've done it. You have a label where people, people tend to say it's, you're naughty or people tend to say you're, you're overactive, you're too hyperactive. If you enjoy something, you, you, you're totally stimulated by it. You almost get hyperactive just through being and through enjoying something. If you're bored, you're almost introvert. You know, I could be in a room full of, say, 40, 50 people, and I will not be in that room. I'll be back at home planning something, or I'll be drawing, or while I'm looking at someone and they're talking to me, I'll be drawing moustaches on the face. And that's, that is a creative superpower, you know? It's like it changes the, it changes the moment you're in. When I was younger, I was always told certain things like, um, like you're crazy, uh, you're not with it, you're a cuckoo, you know, you're mental. When you're told you're not the same as everyone else and everyone's telling you you're crazy, to fit into them peer groups and what people are telling you, you actually act out what people are telling you. I'd gone through the point of finding drugs, you know, and I'd experimented with all sorts of drugs because my, my drug journey started when I was really young. It started pretty extreme, to be honest. It took me down some dark routes because you think people prey on people like me, but I never, I, I never saw that at an early age. So there was always a, a backdrop of should I, shouldn't I with cannabis, and before you know it, the only thing that actually helped me was cannabis. You know, so you'd smoke a couple of spliffs at night and then go to sleep and wake up. So no one would see the effects of where you was actually stoned. You'd just sleep it off and you'd wake up feeling content and happy. So I discovered growing cannabis. Um, before you know it, I was enjoying stuff. It was like, don't get me wrong, I was curtain twitching and you know, I was never answering my front door and stuff like that, but I was content. It gave me a lot, a lot of things. You know, I learned a lot about looking after a plant. I got to a point where I had to find a job. Since I've left school, I must have literally had about 200, between 250 and 280 jobs. Um, and that's, that's no joke. That's, some jobs lasted three hours. You know, when I read up about ADHD, one of the definitions is you have to be mentally stimulated by what you're doing. Why can't I focus what I learned about growing cannabis into growing any plant? One plant is a plant. You learn about soil, you learn about the roots, you learn about the things that it, that it needs to grow, and you can apply that right across the board. And then I started looking at the organic side of food and how much more nutrients there is in it that's not intensely farmed. And there's all these different different ways of growing, you know, like soilless or growing in an inert media, you know, aquaponics, hydroponics. This system behind me is basically a bigger version of this. Now, uh, the, sim the simplistic way it works is the goldfish are fed, they obviously digest it, it comes out as poo. The poo is mixed with the water, that increases plant food, i.e. nitrates and broken down minerals, and that's then pumped up through this bed, which then will fill up to a certain level, and then once it reaches a certain level, it will then dump the water back into the, uh, into the tank below. It's incredible aquaponics in uh, Todmundham. When I first started work here, or volunteering should I say, um, I was learning, you know, it started off really mundane, you know, you might be blending eggshells uh, because that's an organic way of actually changing the pH in the water. I might have been feeding the fish or changing the pump. I mean, there was all pretty mundane tasks, but at the same time, they were a great responsibility because if none of them were done, then your system would completely fail. Hey, you all right? You give them a little feed. See, they're staying low now because they've never been on film, so they're a bit camera shy. <laughs> My life's branching out now. I love all these sort of cultural terms. Um, and what, what it's made me do is it's made me look at all the different aspects in, in growing. It's like everywhere I look is surrounded by plants all the time. There's new tastes, new knowledge, you know, new information, new people. The biggest adventure that I ever went on in my life was me. It was like I, I discovered what I was about. I've learned as a from an early age, don't think inside the box. It's all about learning that there is no box. I mean, I would have never thought that I would have had a job doing what I loved doing. Ever since that moment where I was diagnosed and I was told what the problem was, or I say problem and I, I keep miss, miss saying that, because it was only a problem when I didn't understand it. 
but when I educated myself on it, I learned it's not a problem. The problem is how other people view it and how it's actually portrayed and how you're actually taught to deal with it. And I think there's only one way to, to deal with ADHD and that's chase happiness. You know, if you, if you can find happiness or you can find a part of your life that you're happy with, spend more time in that part of your, your garden of life. You will never, ever, ever find any better medicine than happiness.